Welcome back to another DJI Air 3 video and this week we're talking about video on the Air 3. If you're new, hello, my name is Dimitrios and I create videos on drones, photography and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. After several years of flying the reliable DJI Mini 2, I finally upgraded to the Air 3. And since flying it has been really overwhelming with all its new functions and capabilities. And I thought, why not share my journey with you guys while I learn the Air 3 and all its functions. Think of this as a series of videos as a guide to help you get the most out of your DJI Air 3. To stay up to date, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for future videos. That being said, let's get started. Now what I've done is I've broken this video into several topics. So if you need to refer back to anything specific, just use the chapter markers in the description box down below. So auto versus manual or pro mode. If you're just starting out flying drones, I'm gonna say this now, stick to auto. So long as you use ND filters and just slightly underexposed, you'll be fine. That way you can focus more on composition and nailing the shot rather than what settings best. This is something that I did with the Mini 2 and I didn't really have any issues. Shoot in 4K 30 and you'll be golden. If you want, you can shoot in 4K 60, but just note that the extra frames will take up more storage space. And then again, the only reason to use a higher frame rate is if you wanna try and slow that video down in post-production. When shooting in auto, to change the settings, you have to click the three dots in the top right. Whereas when you're in manual mode or pro mode, you can access these functions quickly at the bottom right within camera view. You can start and stop recording either on screen or using the button on the RC2. I found it helpful to use cruise control for really basic maneuvers and then you can just keep an eye on the drone. Now if you want more control over your settings, switch it over to manual and now we can customize our settings like frame rates. Have your shutter speed double your frame rate so shooting in 30 fps you can fix your shutter to 1 over 60 and even ISO, you can either keep this at ISO 100 or leave it on auto and that way the drone can automatically adjust according to lighting conditions. Just keep an eye that it doesn't go too high to avoid any grain. It's really a balance of having an adjustable ISO or an adjustable shutter. Faster shutter means less motion blur, higher ISO means more grain. Now let's talk about video formats. There are three, there's the normal mode, HLG and D-Log-M. So far, most of the footage in the video has been shot in normal and that's only helped me to speed up my editing workflow. I am a one man band after all. However, testing out D-Log-M, you can use DJI conversion LUT available for free on their website or use any other LUTs to make your footage look normal again. So D-Log-M is still relatively new to me, but I have watched a few videos, so I'm likely to opt for D-Log-M going forward, but I'll just probably use a LUT for now, just to help with the speeding up of the editing workflow. However, stay tuned for future videos where we can cover editing D-Log-M footage in DaVinci Resolve. And I have something lined up for you guys, I actually do. Shooting in D-Log essentially gives you more flexibility in post as you have more dynamic range and color information. However, if you want to save yourself time and share quickly as possible, the normal mode gives you excellent footage and you can make some slight adjustments to this footage too. Now, HLG, Hybrid Log Gamma. I don't know too much about this. However, I did look up some information. Essentially, this was jointly developed by the BBC and NHK. And this is an in-between mode between normal and D-Log M. It's, it's more saturated and contrasty, giving you more pop. HLG is still in its infancy, so I would probably opt for D-Log M over that. Having look, played back the footage as well, it kind of looks really glossy and I'm not a fan of it completely. I'd rather use normal than HLG. I don't know if I pulled that off, but... <laughs> Now slow motion is an interesting one. Now there is a specific slow motion function on the DJI Air 3. And you have two options, 1080p or 4K. In 1080p you can shoot at either 100 or 200 FPS. And 4K you have up to 100 FPS, but you can only use the codec H265. So normally you would use this function for like fast paced 
action shots. So you could slow that right down. This wouldn't really be suited slow motion if you had the drone up high in the air. It would just look even slower, if, even if you shot it in normal mode. So ideally, when you're shoot, shooting slow motion, you'd wanna be low to the ground. So I actually see this being utilized more if you're at, for instance, a racetrack, or maybe you're doing a Red Bull Extreme event, and you know how you get those divers falling out the sky at really fast speeds. That's probably when you wanna use it. Now, personally, I don't think I'll use the slow motion function as I don't really shoot fast paced action shots. I tend to focus more on like architecture and buildings. However, that being said, you never know what happens in the future. And you could probably get away with just using 4K 60 and slow that down in post. You'll probably be fine with that. Now, personally, I am not a fan of vertical video, especially drone footage. I think it looks horrible. I've already made a video on this, so click the video up here and it gives my reasons on the pros and cons of vertical video. But I think it's such a shame and it ruins the whole purpose of having a drone. You want that nice wide view to see as much as possible. And all of a sudden you crop in and all you see is this. Like, you, you destroyed the video. This is a feature I will not use. I would, if I'm just gonna sh have vertical video, I would shoot as I would normally shoot in 16 by nine and then I would just crop in. And even then, that would be plenty enough for social media for the quality. So yeah, there is a vertical mode on the Air 3. It's something that I'm not gonna use. If you're someone that solely publishes content in vertical format on TikTok or Shorts or Instagram Reels, and all you do is vertical, just get the Mini 3 Pro and not the Air 3. The Air 3 has the 70 mil, and even though it shoots in 2.7K, that's still plenty for vertical footage. That being said, I've this was rant over, let's go to the next one. <laughs> one of the perks of the DJI 3 is that it has two focal lengths, the 24 millimeter and the 70 millimeter. Now we're all used to the 24, it's the standard lens, it's the same as the Mini 3 Pros, has those nice wide shots. But now we have the option of a medium telephoto and this looks great. And the benefit of this is that you can shoot from much further distances, making drone flights a lot safer and not disturbing anyone as well. It also gives you that cool parallax effect where as you're arcing around a subject and the background's moving quicker than the foreground. It looks really cool. I'm also glad there's no limitation with using the medium telephoto. All the functions available on the 24 millimeter are available on the 70 millimeter, which is great. Unlike the Mavic 3 Pro, which has some limitations between the various lenses that it has. Do you know what, now I think about it, maybe in a future video, I should set myself a challenge where I'm only allowed to use the 70 mil to make a drone reel. Let me know what you think, should I do that? I actually have a few other ideas for other challenges I wanna do, but maybe just using the 70 mil for creating a drone reel or a video, that will be interesting. Right, the last one that we have here, I swear I've forgotten something I had to add and I didn't add it. Now, the last one we're gonna quickly cover, but I do think it deserves its own video, is night mode. So far, since flying this drone in low light or at night, it's been impressive. I'm still trying to work out what the native ISO is, but I, I think I'm there. So here's what I've captured so far, and don't be quick to judge as I was testing the drone out with its various capabilities, but we'll take a deeper dive into night mode in a future video. that's it for today's video if you enjoyed it remember to give it a like and share this video with a friend stay tuned for next week as next week we're going to actually be covering editing video so the d -log m and using LUTs and I do have something lined up as I mentioned earlier so stay tuned if you want to find that out if there's anything you want to learn about the DJI 3 let me know in the comment section down below 
And also, let me know what drone you're currently flying. Is the Air 3 a drone that you want to upgrade to? Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And before I go, YouTube recommends you should watch this. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. After shutting down my NAS from all the distractions and the police, I finally made this video. <laughs>